What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Flow Presents, aka My Flow this month. And I'm excited to be back here with y'all. Um, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you are. But if you are near your phone, your computer, your TV, make sure you have shared this with somebody else. Because today we talking about my favorite type of people, visual artists. But you know how we do. We got to start off with a Jesus come quickly. So let's run it. Uh, welcome, my guest, Naya Brown at Naya.B. Bye. It's <laughs> basically baby. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> welcome at Naya. Thank you for being here with us. And um, at Alexia or Lexi Stewart, and I know her at Lexi Black Curls and at the Lexi Dex. Um, so we start off with Jesus Come Quickly. I'm going to kick it off, right? Because I, I need this to happen. Jesus Come Quickly because... You know, I'm tired of the mass shootings. Like, I'm legitimately tired of them. That really hit my spirit this week because there have just been far too many. Um, so, Jesus, please come quickly. Y'all got anything for me? Yes. Jesus, come quickly because it usually takes me an hour and a half to wash my hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, we'll have to hasten his coming just for that. Nah, you got anything for us? Yes. Um, Jesus come quickly because people are walking outside without masks on these days. <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. Um, Jesus come quickly because it is summertime and we know finna pe uh, people are finna act crazy with their dress because they've been inside for a whole year. So I need him to come quickly before we start seeing things that do not need to be seen outdoors. I'm calling it out right now. Um, yeah, I got one more. You got one more for me. You on mute. Oh, um, Jesus come quickly because a bra gives me a heart attack now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Like, yeah, girl. Yeah, I got it. I, 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 got it. I cannot equate, but I will say Jesus comes quickly because they're going to have me start going back into work. And I had to wear dress pants for the first time since uh, March 15th. And I think that's when I got married. Like, March 15th, I had to wear dress pants. So, of 2020, right. I need him to hasten the coming because if not, I'm going to have to learn how to get dressed all over again. Mercy. Um, I want to thank y'all for running this segment with me. If you have a Jesus come quickly, please drop it in the chat. Why do you need to see Jesus um, coming quickly? I know we all got reasons. Uh, and so let's get into the body of the show. Let's run it. Oh, man, as we said, this entire month, we will be talking about my favorite type of people, the creative spirits, the visual artists, and I'm excited to be here with you all. So let us give our audience a chance to know who you guys are and really what type of visual artist are you? So I'm going to start off with Naya. Tell me, tell us who you are and what kind of visual artist you are. Um, I'm Naya. I'm a senior class of 2021. <laughs> Um, and I'm basically a painter. I have a collage sitting next to me that I did for my mom for Mother's Day, but I mainly just paint. Aw, look at you. <laughs> Traditional artist, I love it. Um, Lexi, tell us who you are and what kind of visual artist are you? Hello, everybody. My name is Alexis Stortson, otherwise known as Lexi, and I am a designer slash creative director slash I model. Um, but my visual, uh, <laughs> my visual content is really um, the clothes that I design. So I design clothes and bags that are all sustainably made, made from secondhand clothing. And I really work heavily within reworking so I can reduce um, the fashion waste that's produced in the world. Come on yeah. to healthy and conscious designing. And if y'all don't know, I am Rob at Colors Everything on IG, a part of the Flow family. And I consider myself a visual artist in the true sense, man. I do everything from back in the day, pencil on the back of a bulletin to corners of the notebook when we used to write in notebooks. Uh, now I paint, I do digital artwork, 
Um, I'm trying to dabble in photography, but that is for better people than I. Um, but ultimately, I, I just love the traditional arts and really express myself visually. I am happy to be here with you guys. We might have another guest joining us. Um, but let's really jump into this topic of visual arts, really kind of elevate this conversation a bit. Uh, this week has been a lot. Um, you know, if you follow the news in any capacity, you know that there has a lot been going on, particularly for people of color. So I want to kind of cover that topic. Also, though, with a spin, does how do current events impact or if if they do, how and if they don't, that's cool. Um, does does current events have any impact on your work? Whoever feels open to answer, please just jump in. Well, for me, I know um, there's a mural behind me right now. Um, I do feel like I like to paint black stories. If I mm -hmm. do paint people, they're going to be people with people of color, melanated people. Um, yeah, so I feel like that's really how current current issues impact what I mean. I appreciate that, Naya, you being honest about telling your type of story, reflecting your skin and your presence. That's really awesome. Uh, Lexi, what about you? Um, so personally, social justice hasn't been a huge impact into my designing process. But um, as since my business, like my um, clothing line is like surrounded by the fact of sustainability, that's more of the mm -hmm. current issues that I am focused on. And that's kind of what drives me because a lot of people don't know, but like secondhand materials are really expensive. It's hard to come by. Like everything I do, I have to truly put a lot of time and effort into like mm -hmm. all the bags that I make and stuff are like bleach and like just even the cleaning process of everything is just very very intense so um just the fact that I've stuck with that is uh pretty essential because most designers can really just go to any supplier and get the clothes that they need and and put it online I can't do that I have to make everything by hand I have to to source everything myself so um just making sure that I'm not adding to um, the world's waste is a really big issue. I mean, it's a really big um, standard that I put out. And just because it's, it's the future is aligned with how we treat the world, how we treat our, um, how we treat our spaces. And so um, fashion waste is getting even worse now. And I really just don't want to contribute to that. So. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to you, Naya, and come back to you, Lexi. Naya, you talked about telling your story. Um, I'm guessing you're on the younger side of things. Can you kind of share a little bit more about why that's so important for you? Why is it so important for you as an artist, as a visual artist, to make sure that your work reflects um, your melanated uh, story? Can you tell us a little bit about that? I feel like art is something that everybody can appreciate in some sort of fashion. And I feel like, you know, looking at a certain piece of artwork can really touch somebody. They can feel something without really knowing, um, having any context behind what they're looking at. They can look at a picture of a black child crying because they're being stripped away from their parents and know mm -hmm. like they can feel something based off of that. So when I feel, again, being on the younger side of things is really important for me to be rooted in my history because that impacts the future. I am the future, so. Wow, I heard you kind of connect two things that are so important, right? This idea that there's a story and art as a medium, visual art can move people without words. And you wanna make sure that's connected to a story that directly impacts you, that's rich with, his, rich with history. Um, Nelson, welcome, I'm gonna get to you real, real quick, but Lexi, you also talked a lot about the, that sustainability. What led you to make that um, an integral piece of the things that you create visually? So at first, it really didn't have anything to do with being sustainable. At first, it was like, I, my parents, they don't really buy me brand new clothes. Like, it's, we get hand-me-downs. And for me, like, as a person who doesn't necessarily fit all my cousin's clothes, I, I was very adamant about, like, making things work for myself. And I feel like as Black people as a whole, we kind of make things work. <laughs> like, it, if we don't necessarily have the right ingredients or everything that we might need from the tea, like we make it work. So um, I kind of like, I, that's how I got into reworking. And then I kind of figured out the benefits of reworking and using what you have. Um, and that's kind of how I <laughs> really dove into 
what is reworking about and how can it be beneficial to the environment? And I read up all on about it and I was just really, um, first of all, I learned about the really bad sides of uh, fast fashion because I used to be a fast fashion connoisseur. Like I, I Forever 21, woo, Sheen, woo, I was all for it until I found out like the bad wages that they were also giving to their employees is how much damage it was doing to the um to the environment and that's when i really kind of decided so most of my wardrobes everything usually most of the stuff that i have in my closet has been like thrifted or has been handmade or has just been in reworked in some type of way we can't hear you I promise you what I said was really a great follow-up, but I'm gonna try this again. I appreciate you sharing your story and seeing the thread from Nia to you, Lexi, about how your experiences, your like your story impacts the way you show up in this work. Um, Nelson, welcome. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, so what I'd love to you love to do, Nelson, is for you to introduce yourself and tell us what type of visual artist you are. Okay, uh Nelson Johnson's the name. I I am an all-rounder. I, I am mostly into digital arts right now, but mm -hmm. I started as, as uh, well, intuitive artist. I started with painting. I, I was doing sculpting. I was just touching everything. Wow. Um, awesome, and of man. course, I kind of felt that, yes, uh, I, I know this stuff, but I felt more comfortable teaching it. <laughs> so, so most of my, my, my talent was evolved from training others. You get better as you teach, you know, you impart. So that's where it's, it, all, it's, it all started. And then I transitioned into being a, a, a digital artist. And that's where I'm making my bread and uh, my butter and, and some bun too and some cheese and uh, some spreads. <laughs> you got the whole meal from it right now. Yeah, um, we got the whole meal now. <laughs> I just asked um, our other guests, um, Naya and Lexi, about how current events impact their work. So I'd like to ask you the same question. Um, does current events, the things that are happening currently around you or in your society or in our society, does that impact your work? And if so, how? Well, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. As an artist, I think I, I share the same view of other artists. Your, your, your mindset, it, it, it directly affects your work. And then the, 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 um, the situation that you're in, your, your community, your, the, the, as, the, as you said, the everyday happenings, that affects your mind. So it's 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 a roller coaster thing where sometimes you're watching the news and you see stuff happening. I mean, I'm here in Jamaica, but I, I see stuff happening. For example, what happened with 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 with, with, with uh what's his name? Uh, was it what is it? Dante? What's his name? Dante, right? D D Dante, you know, you you're angry, you're you're sad, and you're going through this roller coaster of emotions. And then when you paint or when you design, without knowing. <laughs> Everything changes. Yeah. The message changes. Your colors, um, they change. Every, everything changes. So absolutely it impacts. It, it has impacted me. It has impacted mm -hmm. how I design, how I, I uh, send across my information. I am, I am a bit more uh, deliberate in, in how I, 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 I send messages now because I am, I'm a young black man and I want to ensure that people understand that I'm still confident. I'm still not going to be afraid to to express myself or to, yeah. to even have hatred in my heart to to police officers because you, you have a lot of people who do that they have hatred to police officers but you know all bad it's just that they're as you said bad eggs they're they're bad ones so you know I, I have to be an example because people are looking to me also as a leader to ensure that whatever I I do and say it is something that stays on the positive line of things. Uh, you know what I want to go ahead, Lexi. Um. Yeah. You know just to kind of go back on what he said, um, even though we might not see um, the current events necessarily impacting us directly, like I know for me, um, sewing is my escape. So a lot mm -hmm. of times I'm trying to escape all the stuff that's happening in the world, th things that you don't think should be happening this often. These mass shootings and everything like that, yeah. it's a lot. It's really draining. And it's like... Mm -hmm. Waking up every morning and hearing that a new a new black brother is dead is draining. Something yes, that you yes, don't it, it, it is really something that you is it's toxic and it's almost like it's it's traumatizing to be honest. Yes, it is. And it is. to be constantly 
being put forth with those images and everything in social media and constantly seeing it. And you want to be uh, everybody's best advocate for it. And you want to push towards there's a better society. But a lot yeah. of times you're just trying to gain your mental health. And so um, sewing is something that has like kept me afloat, especially during quarantine. <laughs> so I will, I actually will say it has definitely <laughs> um, uh, contributed to my art and to like what I do. So, yeah. You know, I, I want to say that because as you guys talk about, you both mentioned the idea of escape and how it's connected to your emotions. We also talked about story. So let me see if I can thread this. When did you first notice that art was your escape? That it was like, when did this story really begin and how did you know? Does that make sense? Like, when did you first realize like, whoa, this is the space and place that I can go to. Um, and, you know, this is something that I can do. Uh, Naya, can you start off and tell us like, when did you first notice like, hey, you know, this is something I can do. This is a place that I can go. Um, well, for me, the story of how I first started getting into art, um, I started off with sketches, not necessarily painting. I tried my hand at painting and I didn't think I was that good at it, mm -hmm. but, um, I used to like dance in the sixth grade and they wanted us to, um, come up with like a design for the pamphlet or whatever. And so it was for extra credit. I think I, why not? So um, I did two swans and they were like forming a heart and I actually enjoyed it. It was mm. like Lexi was saying, it was an escape. I enjoyed just like being in my own little world, making that it wasn't that hard for me. It felt like it came naturally. So after that, I just kept on going and going. Awesome. Uh, really around sixth grade, I'm hearing you say, where it kind of got an opportunity to express yourself in a new way. Um, because you were a dancer before, man. We gotta highlight. I'm talking to my producers and talking to the people behind the scenes. We gotta highlight our dancers next time. We forgot all about them as artists. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna come to to you. Um, when did you first notice that uh, sewing and fashion and um, creating, telling stories and giving images and clothes and presents was your escape? Was your art? Um, I noticed uh, hmm, quite early. I would spend hours upon hours looking at like reworking videos on YouTube and a lot of people might think like oh like anybody can just spend hours on social media yes 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 but then I would like definitely then I would bring the materials and figure it out myself and like genuinely enjoy what I was doing I would be <laughs> doing my home I would be doing my homework mm -hmm. and thinking about the clothes that were all around me <laughs> like stuff like that and I'm <laughs> I'm very, I'm somebody who gets distracted very easily. So just going to, um, being able to be around clothes for that long and be focused on it and be completely like tranced or like definitely like in my own head and in uh, having all the calculations because uh, sewing is very much about calculations in terms of sizing and everything like that. It was really like eye opening for me. I was just like, "Oh, this is this is this is cute." Like, I that's that's <laughs> something. <laughs> that's okay. different. Uh, okay, okay, Nelson, I gotta come to you, man. Lexi says she she used to escape into it and escape for hours. Um, what about you, Nelson? When did you when did you realize that this was your escape and your your talent? Let, let me tell you something. Uh, when I was growing up, I had artists around me, and um, they were referred to as crazy. And I couldn't understand why. They, they, they were referred to as crazy because they 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 were so outside the box. The, it's almost the box never existed. They were always doing things weird, so to speak. And I was I was shy. I was so shy because I was outside the box too, but I didn't want anybody to know. I'm like, yo, I don't want to be called crazy. And that's from my I was very young. So of course I was creative. I was always doing uh like really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't confident that this is something that I could use to impact the world and to, to be a leader and to do business from. I really didn't know. I, and even if I knew, I wasn't confident enough to go to my parents and say, hey, yeah. mom, uh, this is what I want to do. You know, so, but I remember from an early age, uh, being an only child, this was my escape. I, <laughs> I would go to my room. I'd be drawing on everything that had a uh, surface, the walls, my clothes. And of course I get a little slapping here and there, but I couldn't help it. And, <laughs> and when I grew up, I realized again that this was my best friend. My mm -hmm. best friend was anything that I could use to 
to showcase what was inside, what I wanted to get out. So my best friend became a paintbrush, a, a pencil, a piece of chalk, my food on the plate. I was shaping. So, I mean, I, I can speak, again, I'm speaking for all artists. I think it's it, it, it nah, in the nah. early, early, early ages. We've been escaping and finding that. that <laughs> now, nah, Nelson, that's you make the same brush. Right. Therapy. <laughs> yeah, man, to deal with all the issues. You, you make me seem real sad because I'm an only child too. And I'm thinking, was I that lonely? Was I drawn because I was just lonely? What's happening? Oh, um, man. You know, but I got to be honest. I I was told that I was drawing since I can like actually hold a pencil. Um, oh. I remember being in church. And again, I said back of bulletins, like I was drawing and I, I drew all the time. I mean, there are two things that on my report card. Uh, he talks too much and he draws too much. He draws class. too much. <laughs> Um, and that, that was something that I was always doing. And it just, you guys talk about escape. Um, you talk about being able to just kind of to, to find yourself mentally well or realize you need to go there because you're mentally unwell. That's absolutely what art is. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. what art is. Um, but Nelson, you talked about something that I kind of want to draw into because uh, Nelson is very clear. You said you were in Jamaica. Um, so you are of Jamaican descent, I'm guessing. And Lexi, I know you're of Jamaican descent. Naya, are you of any... Um, part of the which part of the diaspora are you from? Yes, my mom is born and raised from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, um, so Caribbean background as well. So this is what I ask you guys, because Nelson, you said sometimes artists are looked at as crazy. Their work sometimes isn't appreciated. Do you feel like your art or your the, your way of expression was always appreciated? Um, I'll try to let me start there. Do you feel like your art and your way of expression was always appreciated? I, I think uh, I, I, I am looking back now and I think I had a major role to play in this um, whole appreciation process because I've learned now that you have to put the value on your work in order for others to do the same. So it, it felt good just doing art and getting a pat on the shoulder. I, I was giving myself away. I was being uh, abused, so to speak, because people would know that, okay, Nelson can do it, so let's just let him do it. Mm. So I was spending hours just doing work for everybody, and they're like, yeah, yeah, it's good, it's good, nice, good work. So I never saw the value in it. So naturally, nobody's going to see it. And when I grew up and I realized that there's value in this stuff, and I started placing uh, monetary value in it, uh, then people are looking at me like, I'm weird, like, what? You're going to charge for this? I mean, come on, come on. This is this is my talent that I've invested in. I, I wasn't just given it, but I, I invest, I developed it. I made it into something amazing, so pay for it. You know, and not that it's all about monetary value, but I got so much more from it. I developed, I got, I got a full, amazing life balance from art. I was able to, 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 to lead in situations and to influence positively. I was able to do stuff. I was able to remain... Uh, I would say sane, because there's there are times when things come across your 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 sphere of the world, and the only way to deal with it is from the perspective of, of an artist. You're able to see the positive that nobody else can see at that particular time. Mm. So I, I I mean, I'm just I'm just absolutely happy right now that yeah I've I've learned how to appreciate myself and, and my art. Okay. Um... Lexi and Nai, what do you guys feel? Do you always feel like your work was appreciated? Okay, so for me, it was a little yeah, yes and no. Like, it's definitely, as a career, <laughs> um, art isn't really a thing. Or any, like, type of art-based work isn't really a thing to your Caribbean parents. <laughs> and I love my parents so much. But guys, I just switched my major from nursing. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it was a big hoorah. Yes, yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> and um, and I totally okay. understand though, because as parents who like who have come here like on their own and everything and found stable jobs, those are the jobs that like put food in on my table and put clothes on my back and everything like that. So like I, I definitely understand where they're coming from. But um a lot of times I would feel like my art was more of like, oh yeah, that's that's a great hobby. Like that's a yeah. great hobby. <laughs> you know, like that's cool that you can do that. Wow. <laughs> 
And honestly, like even for me, even for me, because I putting a monetary val value on items is very hard for me. I don't know why, like as a person who hasn't necessarily like I don't like spending a whole lot of money. And so making sure to price my items and my designs at the the prices that they should be priced at rather than the price that like I want like oh I want everybody to enjoy my work I want everybody to have a bag I want everybody to have a top type stuff <laughs> like I had to realize that I, if I'm putting six hours into this bag why why would I be selling it for 45 <laughs> I mean let's talk about it tell the truth and yeah. so even, like I'm not gonna like my roommates really had to um kind of put it into my head like no Lexi like this is dope like you can't be selling this for this much like and even even still now it's still a back and forth with me because i do want my art to be accessible to like everybody and i do want like fashion like my fashion to be like put out there but um understanding that like you have like honed in on this craft you have been perfecting this craft and you have put time and effort into this it's not just um it's not just like one stitch here it is it is bleaching it is this and this and that and like just like the ability for you to come and create that and have the intelligence and the creative mind to pr produce an item or a product like that that's important and um it, it just took me a long time but i think and i'm still working on it to be honest i'm still a work in progress but it's definitely something that i had to um come and see and even like at howard it's been howard has been a very i go to howard university everybody woo, woo, hey, it's hey, you hey, but um, for me, Howard has been extremely influential. Seeing so many Black creatives, uh, so I'm in a modeling organization, and I I'm I'm a model too. And uh, within that modeling organization, organization, there are so many different aspects coming at you. You have your photographers, creative directions, and um, makeup artists, everything, stylists coming together, creating this one like amazing project, and being able to be around that many creatives who are all focused in and honing their craft and perfecting what they do and putting it out there and, and valuing what, you, what they're doing. It's really hard for you not to value what you're doing. <laughs> and you, and I feel like putting yourself in creative environments like that is probably like the best thing for any artist because you will find creatives from all different aspects of the spectrum. And mm -hmm. that's where I've, like I'm still working on it, but I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> Naya, what about you? Um, you know, do you feel like your art was appreciated? Do you feel like art is appreciated? Yeah, um, I feel like um Nelson, I know that you mentioned this earlier, how you feel about your work and the worth that you put into it, the way that you um present your work, what you create, um, really does have an influence on how people will view that also. I feel like, um, yeah, like my, I can show my family something that I did and they can, you know, um, look at that and say, oh, like, that's good night. You know, you did that. But if I feel like this isn't my best work or I'm not as proud of that, then I'm not going to want to really put that out there and share that with other people. Um, I could spend hours in my room painting, doing whatever, like thinking of a design and putting that together. But I feel like if I don't feel like that's my best work, then I don't really want to share that with other people. They can appreciate that. And yes, that can touch them in a certain way. But, you know, it all depends on what me as an artist, what my perspective, what my perspective is on that. I would say that I do feel like my art is appreciated, but... Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell if that's just familial support or if that's like truly like, wow, like look at what God has put installed into her. Yeah. Wow. I, I hear a little bit of myself in all of you. I'm starting with, I'm going to actually start with Lexi and talking about going, you know, to school to be an artist. It was not something my mother specifically respected it, but it was also kind of like, yo, what are you going to do as an artist? Like, how, we, how are you going to survive as an artist? And I wanted to be, you know, the type of artist that gets paid the least for the longest, which is a comic book artist. I really thought I was going to be in Marvel Studios and I was going to be drawing all these comic books. Yeah, they don't get paid a lot at first. In order to get paid a lot, too, you're not even just doing that. You're doing so many other things. Um, and so for a while, I felt like Nelson, where the, I was the person that people loved coming to 
to have them draw something or paint something or Rob's on my project team at school because, you know, our art project's going to look dope. But it's kind of like, oh, yeah, good job. You know, we got an A. And, and so really didn't feel like my art was really appreciated like I think it's starting to now. But that's also where the twist is. Like now, I paint for me. I draw for me. I sketch for me. Like, you know, when I sell my stuff and I price it at the price that I do, it's because like if someone buys it, it's because they really appreciate it. You know, they really appreciate it. Um, and if they don't, it's cool because I didn't really paint it for you. Right. If you appreciate it, that's dope. But I painted it for me. <laughs> if you happen to like it, that's good for you. And so I find that the art right now is kind of going through, I think, a second renaissance, particularly within the Caribbean community. It's starting to be appreciated more by others. But I also don't feel that it is as appreciated as much in certain spaces. Um, and I'm hearing you guys kind of talk about that. You sometimes get family support and sometimes you don't. Um, so tell me for those of you, so Lexi and Nelson said that they make money. Um, what has been for both of you, here's my question. And Naya, if you sell your paintings, please answer. What has been the biggest obstacle in kind of using your art for for monetary gain, right? Or, or you know, to make it into a business, but also what has been the greatest joy in doing so? Whoever feels open to answer. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Um, it, it got to a point for me where I never had a choice. It's a do or die. I mean, yes, you're doing art. Yes, you're doing paintings. Yes, you're doing design. But then you get to a point where you now have responsibilities. And when I say responsibilities, I mean, you're, you're no more mommy's boy. As much as mommy's in your corner, and she's going to help you. But you're now a man. And uh, you really have to do this. So it's a do or die. And you know you're good at what you do. You, you know you're good. You, you, you know you have a talent. And you know you've, you've worked on it. You have developed it. And you have honed into this um, uh, skill. Uh, you, you now want to set a price point for, for, your, for, your, for your hour. And that's what I did. I, I decided what is my hour worth? Not my product, not my talent, not just my time. What is my time worth? And I literally uh, created a formula. And that is the formula I use to price my, my products. Okay. I say to myself, if I was in a nine to five job, what is it that I would want to be paid to feel comfortable? And I literally broke it down to the hour and say, okay, then my hour is worth, uh, in Jamaican terms, uh, I would say, say 15 grand. My hours were 15 grand. So I'd say, all right, I'd take a, an hour to do a flyer or design. So I'm going to charge 15 grand for that flyer. The average man would say, no, no, no. Uh, uh, let me charge less because somebody down the road is doing it for seven. But I'm saying, no, I'm not that somebody down the road. I'm me. Mm -hmm. That is what my hour is worth. So I end up with less clients, but I now get people who appreciate what I was doing because they're saying, hey, you know, you're spending an hour to do this and you, you're obviously putting yourself into it. So, so and I think that is a, a strategy that every artist needs to take. They need to find out what is their time worth, not the product, not their talent, because you really can't pay me for my talent. If I should charge you for my talent, I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm, I'm going to be a billionaire. Right. I, I, there's, there's, no money to, there's no monetary value to, to all of this that God gave me. So I'm going to just charge for my time for now. And I know that after a while it evolves. Then you start charging for your talent. You start charging for just appearing, just for peer appearance. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm being paid for consultation. I'm being paid just for my knowledge. That, that's not my time. So I'm evolving. So I started by being paid for my time, my physical time. Then I'm now being paid for my knowledge, and of course it evolves and it evolves. But but that is a, that is a, it, it's it's different stages. And and uh, for for Naya, I would say I, I would say that's what she needs to do. So whether or not you like that piece that you do, whether or not you feel like uh, not so 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 no, you spent ten uh ten hours or whatever how many hours you spent on that, you charge them for that time. Because if you should charge them for the for the product itself, as I'm saying, you'd be a billionaire. You'd you get one purchase per per two years, but we have to pay bills. You know what I'm saying? So let's put the value on that for now until we evolve to 
to another stage. Man, I appreciate that. I think you're definitely dropping some good knowledge there, Nelson. Um, <laughs> Lexi, what about you? You know, what, the challenges, what's the joys in, in monetizing your, your talent? So the joys, I feel like the joys, as somebody who is still under my mother's belt, because <laughs> I'm not like you, Mr. Nelson, <laughs> but um, I, it has been really, it has been beautiful seeing the outcomes of people actually buying the bags. Because for me, I was very concerned. I was like, man, I, I'm not going to lie. My bags are quite pricey. My bags are about like $100 per bag because I put a lot of effort into it. It takes me a good amount of time. That lining is a whole nother bag, man. <laughs> but um, honestly, like seeing people like especially young people buy my bags. Kaylee bought one of my bags, guys. And it, I don't know if you guys know Kaylee Samuels. She bought one of my bags and I almost cried. Like I, I was crying just because like seeing people my age who I know don't necessarily have like full-time jobs and everything like that really believe in me and be like, oh yeah, no, I think my money is worth this. Like I, it, it is really a joy. It is really a joy. I, right now I'm just getting a lot of gratification and it's beautiful. It'll, but for me, it's like all that money is really going back into the business, going back to yeah. buying more supplies, going back to everything. Cause I'm, I just started like, um, open, I opened up my brand in, um, March. So I'm very fresh in terms of monetization. Um, I have been doing a lot of custom work, uh, since before then but even pricing that i don't feel like especially now knowing what i know now and like knowing my price per hour he's so right guys like who it was a lot to figure out though but um just knowing what i know now i did not price those at the prices that i probably should have and um but it is still really in like it's great knowing that people still want them and like are willing to purchase such items and see like the value that i see behind my items so yeah um, Nai, what about you? Do you monetize your artwork and what's been the challenge for? No, I don't, I don't charge for them. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I'm getting producers talking. So let's, uh, kind of go into some of your work. Uh, Nai, I'm going to start with you. Um, cause you've been quiet for a while. If you have any pieces near you that you'd like to show us on camera, just kind of tell us the, the story behind it or what inspired it or just let's let people know what you do. Um, please prepare to do that. Show us some stuff. Yeah, so I have a collage next to me. I don't know if I'll show that one right now. It's kind of big. But um, I have this piece I did on cardboard um, for my dad's my dad's birthday last year because he's Okay. Um, he's a musician. He Come plays on. the saxophone. Wow. Um, and I know he likes like that jazzy type of piece. And I feel like this does look, um, you know, it does look jazzy. So I just mix the colors up. I made all of these colors myself, except for, I don't think I made the black, but everything else, I just mixed them together and put it up. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's honestly the piece that I'm most proud of because of like you guys were saying, the time and the effort that I put into it, and I was proud of the outcome. So I'm loving that. I hope y'all hear this: that Naya is a true painter because she's making her colors right. Like, I mean, only back in the day they were making their paints, making their oils. Absolutely love that. Um, Lexi, we have some of your work here, uh, so I'm gonna see if I can. The producers will post them up. I don't know what's gonna come up, but if you see it, if you could just tell us a little about whatever um, we are seeing. Okay, so this is a Lex Index bag. This was one of the 15 that I dropped. And because uh, I do things by drops because I don't have the capacity and energy to be doing full scale, you know, things. Um, but this was one of the tops and it is um, hand bleached. Uh, hand, like all these materials came from jeans, like actual jean pants that people wear. <laughs> And so the cleaning process, just because they're secondhand, especially with COVID and everything going on, is extremely intense. Like they have to be soaked in like a baking soda, vinegar and everything and, and detergent for like days. And then they have to be bleached for another couple of days to get them to the right colors that I need. And then then I take them and sew them and use my patterns and stuff like that. But um, 
Uh, that's actually one of the more simpler, simpler bags, simpler, simpler, uh, simplistic bags. <laughs> um, see, this one actually came from uh, the the bottom part of the top that she's wearing, okay. and it has multiple different patchworks of jean, so of like jean scraps that I've used, and then um, there's a inner lining on the bag, and also on like the sides of the bags. There, if you guys know like the bottom of your jean, like the hem of the, your jean, I used it to almost as a, I don't know if you guys know what a binding is. And I put like, uh, uh, I don't know if everybody's going to get this, but it, it just helps with the structure of the bag and make, making sure it's like stable and like, like um, well-made. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Lexi, before you share this next picture, there's a question here um, that I think we should really ask you, you know, someone says, what do you think about clothing designers who charge hundreds or thousands of dollars for items that would cost $20 or 30, 30 bucks at Target um, before you share your next piece as being our um, fashion designer on the show? Honestly, honestly, now I, before I used to think the exact same thing, I was like, oh, I can just get the knockoff, you know, public desires sell, selling the same types of shoes and everything like that. But designers, a lot of these designers, <laughs> um, their work gets stolen <laughs> from these big companies. And it's really, really sad to see like something being sold at such a less price when they didn't even come up with the idea from the begin to begin with. Um, but I think you should give them what they're worth. Like, especially if they're sewing it themselves, that's a lot of time, man. Like that is a lot of time. I do understand when people are like, um, oh yeah, you're getting this from a, like a wholesaler. Like you're not necessarily like hand making the things. You're not necessarily like hand, like designing the things. It's just, you get to pick the clothes out and then put it on. Like I, I do understand why people are like, oh, it costs this much here and this much there. It's mm -hmm. literally for the ex same exact product. But if it is like new, it, it not new, but if it is their own creation and their own design, yeah, it takes time. Everything takes time. Coming up with your own patterns for these designs, sizing y'all, don't even get <laughs> starting. <laughs> but it's a lot so i would say pay 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 them what they're worth <laughs> okay uh i know we paused you in the middle of the piece but if you don't mind jumping to nelson uh nelson do you have oh there we go lexi how about no i'm sorry sandra go ahead oh um this is also another bag <laughs> um this was probably one of my favorite bags because i think this was the first one where i was just like oh like it's okay to make bags even more vibrant and special than what because I was really concerned that the bags were going to be almost too elaborate <laughs> um, for people because, you know, a lot of people are into more of like basics and I'm very much like, let's pop out, let's get it going. And this one was only, I think this one was like the first one, I think it was the first one sold and it really like kind of confirmed. I was like, yeah, no, this is, this was legit. This is dope. So I was really happy with all the bags that I made and I was great. So grateful that um, everybody got a chance to buy them. Awesome. Uh, Nelson, oh, there's a there's a comment there. Nelson, do you have anything around you, maybe on uh, a tablet or something that we could see? Um, or you can let us know maybe a place that we can go to see some of your work. Nelson, are you on mute? Because I'm, I'm not hearing you. Period. <laughs> Wait, is everyone else hearing Nelson? I'm not. All right. Okay. <laughs> I have this piece that I kept. It was one of my favorite pieces. And this is from 2004. This was done with, with uh, um, what was this done with? With chalk. Mm. This is regular chalk that you use. And I use the black paper. Yes, and long it, it, it started to fade. And then I used uh, just crayons. And people were amazed because they were like, crayons did that? But it was wax crayons on black paper. And uh, I kept this piece because I wanted to keep a part of a part of the the what was it the the visual artist because once I transitioned to to being a digital artist, I knew I wasn't going to have time to do this kind of stuff. I do them on commission. I do portraits, but I decided this was going to be my keeper. But if you go to Blue Ember Blue Ember Concepts online, or if you search for my name on Google. Uh, you may see me on Instagram. I have my personal account on Instagram, Nelson, Nelson Bella. <laughs> you can see stuff that I've done, other paintings, other drawings. You can see my digital work on Blue Ember Concepts. Uh, you can see 
work on YouTube, wherever you search for Bloomberg Concepts, you'll see stuff. And I've been I've been using my art to to kind of touch every aspect of, of living right now. So I'm I'm doing foods now, I'm doing uh, construction, whatever is it that it is that I can do to to express my creativity, I do it. You know, I'm doing set designs and just about everything. But it's it's a God given talent, and I'm I'm just elated. I seen I seen uh, Miss Miss Brown's work, and I'm saying I'm encouraging her. The day she begins to put that monetary value on it, it is gonna be even more amazing. You sell your first piece, and that's it. You're li it's a life changing experience, because now you're gonna realize that hey, this is not just a talent that was given to to, to me for for the sake of um, because you know, you know, nobody has needed it or or had the opportunity to get it. We all got got the talent, and I think God, God wants us to to make the best of it, use it to help ourselves, and use it to help our communities, and use it to finance ourselves too. We should be able to put some food on our table from from this gift. And what you're doing is amazing. You know what I'm saying? So, I think I'm encouraging you to put a frame on it and sell it. Sell it and see how you know how, how people respond. You'll be surprised. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. I kind of want to jump in and join this. If you start at the top of the show, um, that sketch was something that I did. And um, you know, I think there's some other work that the producer will pull up. Uh we'll see. Yeah, that's a painting Ooh. I did a, a while back when I was just trying to learn how to paint. Ooh. <laughs> Just just having fun with some stuff. I think there's some digital pieces, uh producer. Yeah. Um, that's all stuff that I did on a tablet. So I went to digital design school and just learned that you can draw on a computer like you draw on paper. And I was like, what? Um, the beauty of control Z, that is pretty dope. It's pretty awesome. Um, and so, like Nelson said, uh to you, um, Nyla, like, yo, just Put the value on your work because that's what you value. Um, right now, I'm heavy in the abstract. I'm heavy into just doing what I feel and, and feeling what I do and, and loving it and living it. And it's just really awesome. I try to do mixed media. Um, I was painting earlier today. It's just it's awesome, guys. And I know you all know this. You all share that passion um, to to really just express yourself. Um, and I'll say I got to give shout outs to my mom. Uh, because my mom really exposed me real early, real early to art in its purest sense. I got a chance to go to Europe and and walk through and and see some some of the greats, uh, some of the spaces they walked, and to really be in those cities where you know they painted still lifes and you see like impressionism and all that stuff. It is just absolutely awesome to be in in the spaces that we have we have been. Um, yeah, Kath, at, 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 uh, I, I gotta say at Katrin. Um, yes, undo is everything, man. Control Z, it's the greatest invention ever. Um, but yeah, so as we talk about, you know, the things that we do, we've shown some of our work. I really want to jump in. What are some artists that have inspired you? Uh, you can drop some names. Um, what are some artists and why did they inspire you? What was it about their art that inspired you? So let me jump down here to Lexi uh, and you for some designers too. Like who, who inspired you and why? I'm not even gonna lie. I don't have any big designers who have inspired me. All the people who have just uh, inspired me are literally at Howard University. Like, hey, you cool. will find some amazing, amazing people there. I can't express to you. It's just, I. it's really throws me off sometimes, like how HBCUs have so much talent, like so much talent, like what we're able to do when we're in an environment that is catered to us. I feel like I'm just advocating for HBC HBCUs, which I am, <laughs> but like, it is truly amazing. Every single creative there has really inspired me in terms of, of uh, how I place my work, uh, what outlets I put it on, everything, all of it combined, what I um, associate my work with, it's a lot. But uh, yeah, I don't really have any big, designers like that no i think the, the question was who inspired you and who artists and if they're in your space i think that's awesome right it doesn't need to be someone who's you know been in the field for x amount of time you're in a creative space and you're inspired by fellow artists so i think that's absolutely dope shout out to hbc um to hbcu shout out to howard and the creatives in that space um if you're watching the show if you watch it later on um we'd love to see your work 
Nelson, I'm going to jump to you before I go to Nyla. Uh, so who are some artists like, that inspire you? Yeah, I, I was I was sharing in the in the thought that it wasn't anybody big. Of course, I grew up uh, around people who were all creative. Uh, inspiration was always there, but my greatest inspiration was just from things, from things that were more things than people. I was trying to solve, I was a problem solver, so to speak. I was always trying to solve a problem. And most of the problems that I solved, they had to do with some creative input. And everybody was like, yo, the artists do that. Yeah, man, the artists. And of course, <laughs> that was inspiring for me. But there's one particular artist, uh, Barrington Watson. Barrington. When I was young, Barrington Watson, he, he's, he's a Jamaican artist. Very, very good. The, the, that, that woman that you painted, that's his style. He, he was obsessed with the female, female's body. And he, he had a style that was just amazing. So <laughs> you have a touch of that. <laughs> so, so Rob, watch out, watch out, watch out. Yeah. You're going to get rich one day. I'm not going to know what to do with the money. Just send some my way, all right? I absolutely, bro. No problem. <laughs> as long as all my bills are paid, everybody can eat. <laughs> But Barrington, Barrington, I really admired him. I never had an opportunity to, to have a conversation with him. I think when I was very, very young, I think I spoke with him, but it wasn't impactful then because I was too young to understand who I was, speak I was speaking with. But as I'm saying, being in Jamaica, it's not an easy road all the time. You always have situations where you have to use your creativity to get around and get out. And even uh, when I went to university, I went to, to Northern Caribbean University. I remember the opportunities that I had to, to make some money was to paint a backdrop or to put the, 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 the logo on a vehicle before we, we knew about vinyl cutters and all the, those expensive machines. Yeah. We were doing it by hand. So, so I was just trying to solve a problem, getting some money to buy some, some chicken, to go off dorm, to sneak off dorm and buy some chicken. <laughs> I mean... That was my creative Real solution life. to start Real doing life. some portraits to kind of assist myself in getting some some goods on the weekend. So it was just a way of life for me. Doing art was a way of life, and it's got it. I mean, it, it all worked out. <laughs> inspired by life and doing it as a way of life. Um, Nyla, who Thanks. inspired you, if anyone, um, in your art? Um, well, for me, there are two people who come to mind, and like everybody else has been saying, they aren't big scale or anything like that. But I think definitely um, my cousin, Zion, um, she's a photographer. And just seeing all of the care and work that she puts into what she creates is really inspiring to me. And um, everything that she makes is beautiful. Um, and there's also this girl on Instagram. I don't know her handle or anything like that, but she'll do paintings of um, victims of police brutality and stuff like that. And I think... Um, her work, again, is really beautiful and inspiring to me. So those are the two people who came to my mind. Yeah, and um, I'll wrap this up before we go to the connection. I am, I'm the same way. Uh, I can drop two names, two artists that really, really inspired me in terms of comic books. Um, Stuart Iman and Chris Bocello were, excuse me, were two artists that I loved when they, when they drew a comic book. I didn't care what the story was. Their art was amazing. But also, I've been around so many dope creative people. <laughs> um, just I, I used to go some places. And when I was in school, you know, uh, the beauty about what Lexi's saying is when you're in the art school and around a whole bunch of artists, like all you do is draw. And so you go into a room after class and people are just sketching and you just meet so many amazing people who express themselves in different ways. I follow them on IG. Um, it's just absolutely awesome. And it, it's great to hear you guys talk about the, the passion and the story behind your art which is why we're about to go into the connection. Um, so let's run it. So I want to give you each about a, a minute, please, about a minute to just kind of share with somebody um, maybe words of inspiration or maybe you can take this moment, this minute to drop where they can find you and where they can buy some of your work. This is your minute. Um, so please, let's just inspire, let's encourage, let's make a connection. So I'm going to start off with you, Nelton, and then I'll go to Naya next. So it's your time to shine, Nelton. <laughs> All right. I I have my personal pages. You search for Nelson Johnson 
or Nelson Bello, you're going to find me. You're going to find me on uh, Instagram. You're going to find me on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. You'll find me. And uh, usually when you find me, you find all my links. Blue Ember Concepts. I am a designer, uh, a consultant. I'll stay a million miles away and help you to, to make beautiful stuff by just uh, my encouragement, my, my, my knowledge, my experience into, into the fields. I don't have any particular style that I love more than another or any color. I'm an all-rounder, any form of art, whether it be dancing, choreography. I think I have a touch of everything. So I'm just blessed. And I, I really want those who are listening to, to, to try something. I mean, express themselves, find some way to express themselves in art. It doesn't have to be a talent for you. It could be just something that you like, whether it's be cooking or sewing, uh, like my friend Alexi. It's just, just, just try something. You may be surprised to know that this is your talent all along and you just never knew because you weren't, you know, you weren't uh, confident enough to, to, to step out. So look for me on Facebook. Look for me on Instagram, Blue Ember Concepts, or look for my name, and you'll find stuff that you like, and you can always reach out. We can talk. Absolutely. Uh, Nyla, coming to you. Yes. Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's underneath my name, Nyla, BBY. Um, and I guess to for some words for inspiration, um, really use your talents to God, use it to please him because that's where you're truly going to find love within your passion. And um, even if you don't know what it is now, keep on praying for it and ask God to reveal it to you. Awesome. Uh, Lexi. Space Hi, everybody. Um, oh, I kind of just want to go back. Um, there was also this lady called Miss Hemmings in Jamaica, and she was the first person who ever taught me how to do a single stitch. And so I just want to put that out there. She's gone, she's passed away, but she's still like really close to my heart. Um, but uh, you can find find me on Instagram at Lexi Black Curls, on Twitter at Lexi Black Curls, um, on um, Instagram also with my um, brand um, name, the Lex Index. And yeah, the Lex Index, not the Lexi Index, <laughs> the Lex Index. <laughs> and um, I also have a website, which is in the uh, in the bio of all those platforms. Um, also, if you easily, you can DM me and especially like with all my customers, they can easily DM me and I'll have a consultant with, I have a, a session with them where I can easily go out and design a whole outfit for them for whatever occasion that they have. And um, yeah, I'm really pretty much accessible. I answer my phones when needed. Um, and I'm just really glad to have this opportunity to talk to everybody. And I just want to say as any artist out there, like, just hone in and like, really try to perfect your craft, because I feel like that's where you become the most in love with it. And that's where you get the most inspiration out of it. And be around people who encourage you to do those things. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I want to take this moment to just really elevate this space and platform and these artists, please understand um, that it takes time for an artist to express themselves. You're, you're buying an expression of themselves and you're buying a sense of their vulnerability. You are buying into the idea that creative creativity is valued. And so I really want us to support black art and, and stop undervaluing black art. Um, we have a many creative people here. Uh, you guys saw Nelson's work. You see Naya's work. And what, what blows my mind is Naya is still blossoming as an artist. So like her in another few years, where is that? I mean, Lexi has a whole line. When you see these artists, when you are impressed by their work, put your money where your mouth is. Um, that not only does it help them invest in themselves, but it lets them know, lets us know that our work is not just something that is a good, good job. Um, it's, it's as meaningful as the contractor. It's as meaningful as the car builder. It's as meaningful as the, uh, performing artist. So I really want to thank everyone who took the time to watch the show. I want to thank my guests for being on flow presents. Um, please, 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 please. If you're in the, um, audience right now, absolutely follow them, look for them, support them. Let us make sure that money is circulating within the black community. Lex, you, I saw your hand up real quick. Um, last thing, Naya, I really just wanted to tell you, even if you don't feel comfortable monetizing your um, items right now, because I completely understand that I was definitely where you were like four months ago. So 
<laughs> but what's it called? Um, just put it out in terms of like your social media p- platforms, like sh- like constantly be reposting your own content because other people will see, especially if you're not, uh, make sure your page isn't private. So it's going out to everyone. Use reels, show how you make the creations, everything like that. TikTok, your best friend, hon. Like <laughs> it will work. All these little, little pa- platforms that you think that might not be as beneficial, they definitely are. And you'll value it later on in the future too, because as a lot of the things that I created, I'm like, oh, how did I even get to this? And I'm like, oh, if I just had filmed it, it would have been okay. You know, I would have known. But I'm just that, just as a little, you know, tidbit. I got a vibe off of that real quick. Um, this is the one thing I tell everyone about art who say, oh, I, I can't do art. Not only can everyone do art, which is why I love it. There is an appreciator for every art piece. There is an absolutely appreciated for every yes, art piece. I love that. I love that. Right? Okay. Is- <laughs> if someone can put a dot on a large white canvas and someone else can buy it, mm-hmm. that means whatever you do, someone else out there is for Yes. So please, uh-huh. please, please, to all the artists, to all the artists out there in whatever medium, whatever platform, do your art. Do it because you care about it and it's passionate to you because somebody will purchase it and they'll actually treasure it and value everybody. I want to thank you for being with us. I want to remind you that flow. Um, as a young adult group and ministry has a number of events that we put on, uh, starting actually with tomorrow. I'm going to start there. Tomorrow, we have Sunday dinner. Yo, come out, right? Um, if you see the, uh, you can see there at metrosda.org, Metro Young Adults is a way to get in contact with us. You can reach out to me. Um, you can DM me at Color is, uh, Color is Everything, and I'll give you the link. Yo, come out and talk with us. We literally just bring our food. And we talk about everything, every single thing. I, again, I heard that Grey's Anatomy is going to be in the conversation for tomorrow. Um, I'm going to talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So absolutely know that you are welcome in this space. Then on Friday, next Friday at 8 p.m., that is our summer hours. So please excuse that. 8 p.m., our summer hours, we have the word. When Honestly, we break into the word. Right. We open up the Bible and we dissect it. We talk about it. We talk about its connection to our lives. So feel free to join us. Um, on Fridays at 8 p.m. And then Saturday mornings, we have soul food, right? We got food for your soul. Um, we are now right now in the book of Titus, and we are talking about everything from how to select a good leader to what is mentoring about. So join us on Saturdays at 1030 a.m. And then come back next week because this is the show I'm geeked for, right? Outside of my own show, this space, to talk about our singers, our songwriters, right? Like, all the people that touch you when they do that, whatever. My wife definitely just looked at me. Didn't even have to see her face. Um, so come out, join us next week, 4.30, as we are going to be there with our singers and songwriters. Everyone, thank you. Um, we love you. God bless. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Peace out. Oh.